uh, I'm Dale Worsing, a longtime uh, uh, board member of the Tacoma Historical Society. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone for giving up such a beautiful evening to come out uh, for our program. Uh, as uh, Gary mentioned, uh, uh, this is uh, kind of uh, making it up as we go along because this is the first time we've been able to meet in person in a couple of years. So, uh, th thank you for coming out and uh, uh, giving this uh, a trial run. Uh, and my main function uh, this evening is to introduce our speaker. Uh, it's, uh, he tells me uh, pronounces the name Chossum. Uh, and uh, he's, I think he's working on the record for a number of uh, local books uh, <laughs> uh, turned out uh, by uh, uh, the uh, Arcadia uh, uh, company. That, um, uh, 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 they remind me of a conversation I had with Murray Morgan years ago, and he was telling me that there's no way to make any money uh, writing local history. And the Arcadia people figured out how to do it. But, uh, they don't, don't uh, use uh, three color. And uh, they have a forum that, that, that works. But uh, uh, they've done a great job for those of us who are interested in local history. Uh, uh, and uh, with that, I'm going to uh, introduce tonight's uh, speaker, uh, uh, Don Chasm. Um, as I say, he's turned out uh, a number of these uh, books, and uh, uh, what he's going to tell us about tonight is his book on uh, the uh, uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Uh, I'll mention that uh, I have a particular bond with, with that uh, bridge. Uh, uh, I watched the first bridge plunge into the Narrows when I was four years old. Wow. And uh, uh, it sort of uh, created a, a bond. Uh, so uh, uh, with that, uh, uh, I'll invite uh, Don forward, and uh, uh, I won't try to run his slideshow. Uh, uh, please welcome Don Shuffson. Well, thank you, Paul. It's uh, kind of neat to see that there was somebody here that was actually saw the thing go into the water. Uh, it's always interesting because. Uh, you get an audience like this, and yeah, maybe there was even somebody that may have even worked on that first bridge, but uh, not so many anymore. A lot of them that worked on the second bridge, and uh, a lot of people worked on the third. That's always my fear that uh, doing a presentation like this would be somebody that worked on one of those second or third bridges that uh, knows a heck of a lot more about bridges than I do. <laughs> I like to write about it. Um, the interesting, one of the interesting things, the title of this book, I, I went into it uh, with the idea of calling it the Tacoma Narrows Bridges. And uh, Arcadia didn't like that too well. They didn't quite understand. There really had been three, and there are three. So uh, it was really fun digging into this and uh, doing this. Uh, we've done one on uh, Pierce County, one on Tacoma, one on Gig Harbor, Bainbridge Island and the mountain climbing in Washington State. Uh, really fun doing all of them. Did one at Tacoma too. Uh, quite often people can't tell the difference in the bridges by looking at them uh, if you just have a casual interest in them. You can always tell the first bridge because it's got that one divider in the middle. And it's really tall and standing taller and kind of prouder in some ways than the others without quite so much support. Plus, if you see it, uh, it's the right place. It's only two lanes. Uh, I've broken the book into four areas. 
before the bridge, the first bridge, the second bridge, and the third bridge. That's the analogical thing. So this was a little bit like what it was like before the bridge. Uh, here's some early uh, Europeans probably just getting off the boat, still got their derby hats on, meeting the Native Americans that are camping on the shore. And so obviously there was no bridges at that time. Uh, Narrows wasn't the first and maybe not even the longest bridge. This is the bridge there that was put in by the Northern Pacific Railroad um, down on the commencement bay and everything that way uh, to move logs and everything else around. And of course the Native Americans, they moved their uh, boats along there before the bridge too. This is an interesting kind of a before the bridge scene. Uh, this is the Atalanta, uh, not to be confused with Atlanta, but it's the Atalanta Ferry. And this was the way people got around from Gig Harbor to, to uh, Tacoma and around the south and a lot of different ports. You notice that there's no cars on that. Well, this was probably taken about uh, 1910, not too many cars were being transported at that time. They converted this particular boat later to a ferry boat, and where all those people are. They used to um, take uh, straps and, uh, and lift cars and put them on there and put them on and off at the docks, and that was kind of an interesting diversion to see a boat that was a purely a passenger boat converted into a ferry boat. So that was before the bridges. Uh, if you want to have a cup of coffee and a hot dog, uh, going between Gig Harbor and Tacoma, this is what you'd get. Um, this would be either uh, either for the before the first bridge or the second bridge. The prices uh, you can't quite see them on this one, but it's about ten cents for a cup of coffee and a, you know just cheap for a small sandwich. This was a relief boat. If uh, the boat uh, was broken or needed maintenance, that's what you got to kind of make things go. That's the relief. That's one of Scansy's boats. They built all kinds of boats out of Gig Harbor. This is an early uh, ferry scene coming into Gig Harbor up on their north side before the bridge. So everybody's anxiously waiting for the bridge. Let's go back here just a second. This is the main one, Point Defiance to Gig Harbor. That's how you got there. No, no uh, bridge at that time. That's good. These guys are all kind of doing the the, the uh, 50th Centennial celebration. Um, for Tacoma kind of getting ready and they're these are kind of the boosters in Tacoma and this is the Narrows Bridge Gang which a lot of these guys were the same people that were uh, promoting the bridge this started in about 1927 or so and they uh, enlisted themselves to be supporters of the bridge to lobby for the bridge sell tickets for the bridge and just do all of the promotion for the bridge that they could to get it to come. This is an artist's rendition at that time of the bridge. And for a lot of people, you drive across it and you really don't kind of understand where you are or where things are. And I'll point out a few of the things here um, in case you've never really paid attention. The point out there is that's the point on Point Defiance and on the right hand side that's the 6th Street entrance to the bridge on the left hand side is Gig Harbor and you can see all of the development there I mean Gig Harbor is really booming down there you see Cottesmore and all that stuff you can see the uh, Bonneville Power Towers there and uh, Harstein Island is right up there on top so, Vashon. 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 which one is ours? Vashon. Vashon. I'm sorry, yeah. Vashon. <coughs> Vashon. Yes. Yeah. 
This is the building where a lot of the design happened. Nowadays, of course, we've, you know, engineers don't use those kind of uh, <laughs> instruments such as paper and pencil too much. They're using computers and programs and everything else. But this was about a mile from the site where a lot of the engineering was done after the bid was let to start the bridge and uh, a lot of the detail planning and everything there. Uh, it was pretty cramped and those guys uh, were a little bit dressier than most engineers are nowadays, I'm sure. But yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. This is the cement plant. The bridge obviously took a lot of cement. And this was on the Gig Harbor side. And uh, they just uh, mixed that stuff up and kept pouring it down the, where they needed it for the bridge. This is the entrance from the Tacoma side, you're on top of the East Tower looking down towards Tacoma. Notice all that development there? That's <laughs> about 1940, 1940 right in there. You can see the toll gates in there, right in the middle of it all. These guys are interesting. I mean, you take a look at them, and here's Gig Harbor on the other side over there. They're sitting there, and you kind of think about that. Hmm, they're pretty high off the water. Well, where's their safety harness? Oh, there is no safety harness. Well, if they fell, where'd they go? Oh, that guy on the left-hand side, he's smoking a cigarette. Hmm. Well, at some point, he probably takes one hand off, takes it out of his mouth, and you know, get some fresh air or something, so that's kind of scary. And then you think a little bit more about, well, he had to light it, too. And I haven't seen too many people light cigarettes with one hand. I mean, that took two hands. These guys were just really, really supermen when it came to balance and guts, but that's, that's what they did. Plus, you know, when you look at their tools that are hanging, I mean, those could very easily get caught on something. I mean, that's uh, not a job a typical banker or an accountant would do <laughs> too well. <laughs> There's another guy. Look at those tools just hanging there. He's just working away. This is one where they're starting to get the uh, platforms to go up to the top so they can start stringing the cables that are actually going to suspend the bridge. Those are platforms people just walk up and down and those will all come down pretty quick after a while. This guy is an interesting diver. Um, of course there's a lot of underwater work done on the bridge and uh, tying down the cables to the anchors and everything else. And of course we all are familiar with the, how uh, swift the narrows can be. They could only work under there for about 15 to 20 minutes during the ebb. Um, until you know, just a very short time because that current would start moving fast and they just couldn't go and again. So he would have a couple of, this is Johnny Baker is his name. Uh, he had a couple of tenants all the time that uh, would get him down under the water and he'd do what he needed to do to tie up some of those cables to the anchors. And I just thought that was quite heroic work. That quite often you don't think about it. You just kind of take it all for granted as we drive across the bridge. It's kind of like, here it is. Yeah. Didn't get my feet wet today. <laughs> These guys, of course, uh, they like to climb up to the top of it once it was all kind of built and uh, notice all of the protective harnesses and <laughs> stuff those guys have too, you know, I mean, no way, but there they are. 
and just it wouldn't take much more than a gust of wind, you know, just kind of scary thing. But those guys are just used to it. <clears throat> this is the uh, program for the day that the bridge opened. Uh, it was uh, July 1st, 1940, and there was a whole celebration. Uh, official opening, the Coleman Narrows Bridge and the McCord Field. Well, this is a big important part of it because uh, <clears throat> a lot of people, they get carried all away on what the passenger fee is to go across. Well, this bridge wasn't built for uh, Joe and Sam to just drive across the bridge to go shopping. This was really, really kind of built with a military purpose in mind. You think about it a little bit. You've got Bangor, you've got uh, Bremerton Naval Shipyard, you've got Keyport on one side, and you've got Fort Lewis McCord on the other side, JBLM. Uh, this bridge cut the time in half. And you think about the timing of it, this was all kind of really part of the war effort. It wasn't advertised as part of the war effort, but that's really what it was. It was um, July 1st, 1940. Well, you know, figure out when the war started and everything else. Quite interesting aspect of it. This is another kind of a tell. Uh, this is cutting the ribbon, and this is cutting from the Tacoma side. Uh, you see any Navy people there? No, no Navy people there. That's all I know. Hmm, those guys must all be from Fort Lewis McCord, which was celebrating the opening of McCord Air Force Base at that time. And they had two openings, one on the Tacoma side, and then one on the uh, Gig Harbor side. Oh, where'd the Army go? Oh, those guys are all Navy. Hmm. Well, let's figure this out, you know? And so you got the Admiral, and they got the Admiral cutting the ribbon instead of the Colonel on the other side. Uh, of course, there's no Gig Harbor mayor there, because Gig Harbor <laughs> wasn't a town. That's always kind of interesting, yeah. too, to think about that. So sometimes when Gig Harbor thinks it's their bridge, well, guess what? <laughs> they're just kind of on the way to wherever the rest of the traffic is going. If you actually ever spend any time on the bridge watching the traffic and did any kind of an observational count on how many 18-wheelers were going across that bridge and heavy transports and everything else compared to normal commuting traffic, uh, it would be surprising. Uh, you wouldn't be surprised if you're there at, say, 8 o'clock, but or 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. But uh, during the daytime, it's just mostly commercial traffic. Okay, this is the first uh, passenger going across the bridge. And that's uh, Governor Langley there uh, paying his toll. Going across. Everybody else is kind of in line to go. Way to go. There were about a thousand cars, two thousand went across that first day. There they go. They're going across. They're going to go over to Gig Harbor. By Kelly, look at that. And that was it. I mean, you think about how many people we had for the third bridge opening, if anybody was there, it's a few thousand, significantly more than that, for sure. And look at all of the development up there on the left hand side there. And those houses uh, worked at that time. Quite interesting. That um, 1924 Lincoln, I believe, is still uh, on display at the, uh, the Automobile Museum here. Le Lemay's Le Museum, uh, yeah, they still have that definitely. in Lemay's Museum. Uh, Roosevelt uh, and uh, Queen Elizabeth both rode on it at different times and different occasions throughout the country. For mm -hmm special trips. There they go. They're coming over. And again, virtually no development over there on the Gig Harbor side. This is kind of an interesting thing. 
uh, <coughs> this is advertised as the four hour last ferry boat ride. Another golden jubilee on the Kalakla. And those of us that remember the Kalakla that was destroyed a few years ago, which was on the National Historic uh, Site, designated uh, as <coughs> National Historic Site up until the time it was destroyed. Um, had a pretty rough go the last 10, 20 years. But anyway, this was when it was right in its prime. They were going to leave the Tacoma Municipal Dock, go to Point Defiance Ferry Landing, and then go to the Gig Harbor Ferry Landing. And uh, they did that. That was kind of cool. Passengers only, no autos. They had a big party. There it is. Picture the people waiting to get on for that last ferry ride. This was after the dedication ceremonies um, the day before. There you go. They post the prices. Okay, there you go. That's what it cost to get. Now here's where you can tell, of course, uh, the first bridge from the second bridge and the third bridge. This is the second bridge. You can see those three uh, cross members with the X's on it. That's Always the second bridge. There we're back to the first bridge. That's the toll gate. Notice the two uh, buildings on each side. Those are the break stations for the toll takers so that they can go in there and have a break and have a cup of coffee or lunch or whatever they needed to do at that time. Right off the get-go, the bridge was weaving. Even the builders were concerned about it while they were building it. And they were starting to uh, design corrections for this weaving on the bridge. Even before it opened, they had hired the consultant from the University of Washington and uh, had them study and, and figuring out how to correct this because they knew this wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> Just wasn't the way it was supposed to be. Also notice it's only two lanes. That's, uh, yeah, two lanes and not much under, under uh, support. So... People used to ride across there just for fun. Hey, instead of going to, you know, on a roller coaster at the, the fair, let's go to cross the bridge today. They used to do that for fun. Not very long, though. A little bit more. I mean, it, this was not terribly unusual. And uh, They'd shut down the bridge every once in a while. They'd say, well, the bridge is kind of wavy today. We're not going to let people go across. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a scary thought, you know, you think about it. I mean, what would you think if we were going to drive across the Narrows today and they said, uh oh, we can't go across today because the bridge is waving a little bit? <laughs> Not me. It's just another view of what it was a typical shot. Was that based on winds? Yeah, wind. This was wind. Yeah, this was not uh, traffic or uh, any, uh, any other force. It was just purely the winds, and the design of it. And that's the big part of it is the design and the wind, and how much of it that was uh, the catastrophe was caused by the wind, how much by the uh, design and everything else. Well, nowadays, um, our present bridges have been documented with winds up to 100 miles now, and no problem. You know, nobody even got concerned. So, you know, it is all the design. That was, it was designed in the 30s in the Depression, and so they didn't have the big fancy computers that could put men on the moon like we have now, or, you know, the experience. This was only the, the, the Narrows Bridge was the third longest <coughs> span bridge, suspension bridge in the world at that time. So there wasn't a big backlog of experience and engineering schools experienced it. Let these guys know what they needed to do. Of course. This is one of the last pictures. The guy from the University of Washington, Fur Clausen. I 
never pronounce his name. I read it a lot, but I don't know how to pronounce it. He was hired to study about the weaving and waving and how to correct it. And he implemented some actual corrections that eventually just broke. Uh, they put them on and tried to correct it, and it broke. But he was uh, taking the movies, the old 16 millimeter movie he had set up there. And uh, everybody in town that day knew something special was happening with the bridge. It wasn't like, whoops, what happened? And, you know, big surprise. It was crowds were starting to gather, and it was on the radio and everything else. That, uh, this bridge was just going nuts. But this was a 16 millimeter film. This is one of the frames. And here's the other frame, another frame. What date was that? This was November 7th, 1940. This would be, pardon me? Months? July. Yeah. So four months. About four months, yeah. 130 days or something like that. It was, yeah, just a matter of a few months. July 1st it opened, and then this is on November 7th. So what, what were the winds that day? Do you, do you About 40 miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, so not, not much. Yeah, not excessive. <laughs> yeah. Not excessive by today's standards. So were people yeah. concerned pardon? about driving? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there were people on the bridge. Well, you can see that car right there. And, uh, they had a choice. If you look at that bridge, would she drive? <laughs> no, no. And that may have happened after he was on there. The, the uh, people did have a choice, uh, except they'd shut down the bridge. If they got to weave in too much, they'd shut it down. And say, oh, the bridge is closed. It's just rocking and rolling too much. What kind of winds would it take to get it doing that? Well, this one was about a 40 mile an hour yeah. wind. The ones we saw earlier were probably a little bit lesser. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really know. Um, there's a lot of studies to that, and if a person wants to really dig down in that, believe me, they have really researched this. Um, there's just pages and pages on that. Uh, <coughs> studies by the engineering schools and universities. They can just almost tell you minute by minute what the uh, measurements were on the wind and, and what was happening. But uh, this was, uh, there was nobody lost their life on this trip. Uh, there was one dog that, uh, Tubby, uh, Tubby was lost. He was um, the daughter of one of the reporters, Coatsworth, for the Tacoma News Tribune, I think they called it the Tacoma Times or something else at that time. But, and then there was one other truck that was lost on the other side. But everybody got off fine, which was almost a miracle in itself. But that uh, was taken just about that moment. <laughs> and you can still see that one car up there on top. This is a classic picture that was taken by Richard Studio. Um, it's probably the best picture of it actually falling. It's kind of a classic that you see most everywhere. What time of the day did that happen? About 10 o'clock in the morning. <coughs> the whole event only really lasted about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, the whole falling up. Of the waving, the, uh, the waves on the uh, bridge lasted a lot longer than that. I mean, it probably went all through the night to different degrees. But the actual, when the first pieces started falling, was about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. You could look at this piece here, and I'm going to refer to this. Uh, support thing on the back. Uh, quite often the question comes up, well, where did the towers go? Are they still standing? Uh, did they use them again? No, the towers went down. Uh, parts of them were in the bottom of the sound. Parts of them were made into uh, bullets and boats for World War II. And, uh, but that very last support beam that you see to the left, that's still there. It's still actively part of the support for what we drive across every day. The whole, any remaining part of the bridge is now active. 
part of the National Historic uh, System. And it's illegal to just pick up a piece of the bridge and take it home with you if you find one, uh, because it's a National Historic Site. When I first moved over here, and it was in uh, the early 80s, you could actually walk down on the beach there, and you could pick up pieces of the bridge. You know, we didn't think anything of it. I mean, you know, we're all a piece of the bridge. Oh, that would make a souvenir, but there's so many of them around. But uh, that's totally illegal now, and I don't think we can find it. They have a big twisted piece of it at the uh, Harbor History Museum, which is kind of interesting to look at. You know, of course, went through all of the proper procedures to get that piece for the museum exhibit. These five sad fellows are discussing what just happened on the bridge that day. Um, Maybe the engineer. <laughs> uh, yeah, the engineers, and uh, in the book it names them and tells you what their titles are. On the far right is uh, the guy from the University of Washington that was actually studying the bridge and took those pictures where the major meeting was taking place just before it fell in. But the book does name them and their titles. Not happy fellows. That's what it looked like a little bit afterwards from the east side. That's another picture. You can see how it's just kind of broken. And again, it's from the east side. Not much left. These are the Boy Scouts. They're celebrating the new bridge. 1950 has come. And I'm so, in that pi picture somewhere. Pardon? I'm in that picture somewhere. Would you? Yeah. Troop okay. 48. Troop 48. Well, that's exactly, yeah, you can see right on there. Troop 48, it says. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're in there. Do you recognize yourself or can you see it? Uh, I've not been able to spot my. So, but yeah. I'm behind someone else in, in that particular photo. Yeah, yeah. I can name most of the people in the photo. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's neat. That's neat to have you with us to share that because that was a big day. Um, it only took them a couple of years to really build the second one, but uh, obviously they waited until the war effort was over until they could gather up all the money and to do that. The first bridge was about six million dollars to build. The second bridge was about roughly close enough to call it ten million to build. Not an awful lot of difference. But the third bridge is about six hundred and eighty million. And uh, that was interesting. I don't have the exact numbers that are readily available. Uh, there were deaths on the first bridge and the second bridge. The third bridge, uh, there were no fatalities on that one. There's a couple of injuries. But uh, safety was far more um, <clears throat> an effort on the third bridge than it was the first two. Also, there's been far more deaths, heaps and mounds of people just jumping off the bridge than were ever died or died on the bridge. Kind of an interesting statistic that comes up once in a while. This is the anchor. That's what anchors it under the bridge, underground. I don't see that. But. Yeah. This is from the top. Uh, this is the second bridge. See that guy on the right? Uh, he's, he's not as scared of heights, apparently. But he is harnessed in there. He's... There's uh, two sketches in the book. He's a um, uh, architect, designer, and he's got some comparison pictures of the first bridge and the second bridge in the book. And so it was interesting as I got to doing this book, I thought, 
Well, what's that guy doing up there? You know, he's an architect. Shouldn't he be sitting at the table, and, you know, pushing a pen and a pencil? But no, he does that stuff too. So that's interesting. You can see their handrails up there on the top. People don't usually notice those, but uh, those things have to be painted every once in a while, just like a boat does, because it's exposed to the elements and salt water and everything else. So people do go up and down. You can see the what they call the suspenders are hanging. It that's what suspends the bridge or hanging from the cable. Four lanes this time. Four vents. And notice the vents are going the long way <coughs> rather than across. On that first bridge, the kind of thing for the air to pass through, it went uh, perpendicular to the road. Well, these go the full length of the road. Significant design change. This is another one, uh, early one. That of the 1950 bridge looking into Tacoma. You can see the development now coming in there. Still not quite what uh, we see today, of course. But. This is a view looking west. And this is the original piece of the bridge that's still preserved and still there. Still doing its job. We drive over the top of it every day. And uh, that was the one piece that uh, the engineers decided was okay to save. There's no damage to it. It's on the Gig Harbor side, as I say. You can see the train, the Northern Pacific train, there on the other side. This is just the approach, it isn't into the water. A lot more sturdiness underneath on the 1950 bridge. The, um, I don't have a picture of the 1940 bridge here in this, in this presentation, but it's a lot of structure there. This is a, the old break house. Still there. That's what it looks like today. You know, somebody driving by. I mean, you don't notice this kind of stuff as you're driving by. That's why I picked out some of these pictures, because it's some of the stuff you just don't ever see as you're driving by. Uh, but that's it, on one side of the old toll gate. I put this in here just to kind of, you can notice that some things don't change. They still have that sign that says severe side wind ahead. <laughs> well, you know, guess what? It would have to be over 100 miles an hour before too much would happen, but the sign is still there. And this is a good comparison shot of the two bridges. Um, you can see the wider uh, extra strength of the newer bridge on the left. Uh, it's a cement bridge as opposed to a steel bridge on the right. And also, a lot of times it isn't noticed that those piers are not straight up and down. They're, they point in towards each other. Uh, they're broader at the base than they are at the top. That's uh, something that you know you just don't kind of notice unless you stop and take a look at it. Or unless you've read my book. <laughs> <laughs> and we still have the old-fashioned uh, air sock. Oh, I can see the wind is blowing today. Well, you, you know, the, the engineers and everybody that's tending this bridge has got the latest state of the art in weather prediction and wind prediction down there. All the meters and bells and whistles to alert anybody and everybody. The, the bridge has not really been shut down due to wind since the third bridge has been put in. Uh, there's been some ice problems where um, up on the cross beams the ice would start falling down and they're afraid it would hit a car. But there hasn't been any. This is just two pictures here that kind of displays a little bit of the difference. 
and yet kind of the um, stability of the design. This is the um, 1950 bridge top. It's got that cross beam like that. This is the 1970 bridge. And they just kind of maintained a little bit of the design. But that's what it looks like. Toll gates, there they are. Probably all the way through the road. It's a little bit of a close up of the toll gate. I've often wondered why there are always so many people backed up at those toll gates. Mm -hmm. But it's just kind of amazing. I mean, it's probably people that can't get driver's licenses or can't get visa cards or can't get good to go or whatever reason or they don't want their wife to know they went across the bridge that day or the bar. I don't know but the bridges I just it always amazes me how many people are backed up on that place kind of interesting study and contrast there Bottom looking up. This is uh, where you, the cable goes into the anchor to go underneath and be tied into the ground. And you can see that little ramp where they can take equipment up that little ramp and then jump up on that uh, su suspension bar and they can actually go up and walk up to the top like we saw that guy uh, with the uh, handling each side of the uh, uh, handrails there to get up to the top. Now, if you don't want to go that way, and it's a little bit windy, a little bit cold, a little snow or something like that, this is the elevator ramp. Uh, you don't see any buttons there to press to go because, I mean, I think you have to practically have a key from the governor to get up on that. But uh, the workers do, ma do maintenance on the top of the bridge through elevator access. And there are sometimes one of their old buddies will, you know, get to go to the top with them or something like that. One of their co-workers or something like that. But, uh, that's on both sides of the bridge. The um, steel bridge, the 1950 bridge, also has an elevator. And it's down below. I never did see and really found the elevator for the lower bridge. but. That's Becky. She's standing there looking at the War Memorial uh, site, which was put in there by the Tacoma Historical Society and is maintained by the Tacoma Historical Society. Ceremonies each year are out there. And uh, this was just redone, what, about five years ago, Paul, would you say? Five? Yeah. Yeah, about five years ago. Uh, something like that. Yeah, uh, this uh, is redone. Yeah. Now the Tacoma Historical Society didn't uh, build it or uh, put it in, but we do uh, uh, put on the, the memorial, the uh, observance, and the veterans the uh, yeah. observance for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, it's and you had a ceremony just a few weeks ago, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is an annual event out there. It's it's really neat. They have nice granite tablets there for each of the wars, and uh, the Tacoma people that uh, that were there. Uh, I'll um, tell a, a brief uh, a story. Uh, um, I was being visited by. Uh, two cousins uh, who had been in the Coast Guard. And <coughs> we uh, walked out to the middle of the bridge and come back. And they started looking at the uh, uh, monuments at War Memorial Park. And I think it took them an hour and a half. I think they read every line that, uh, in the <coughs> monuments. Uh, uh, I, I haven't uh, put it on uh, Recently, but I have a slideshow about uh, Memorial Park and the uh, uh, stories that are told there. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a it's a nice deal. If you haven't gone out there towards uh, the end of that park, uh, on the, the Tacoma side, of course, find your way to that park. And it's worth uh, a morning or an afternoon to wander around there and take a look. It uh, gives you a whole new appreciation for how many people were participating in the war from Tacoma. It's just the classical mountain here. And, Get an idea of the differences but similarities at the same time. It's really close uh, to the neighborhoods. If somebody hasn't been out there this close to the neighborhood, I mean, you you hear traffic going across there. And of course, some of the neighbors raised a little bit of a fuss, and the, the state came and did some abatement to protect them from the noise and everything, and understandably so. But it's uh, a bridge that's really in a neighborhood. This is a um, coin, shouldn't say a coin, but a medallion that Harbor History Museum made to celebrate July 15th, 2007, when the third bridge opens. And that's what the t-shirt looked like. Anybody that wanted to buy a t-shirt, you could walk or run on the uh, new bridge across it before they opened it to traffic, and it's kind of neat. There's a lot of classic pictures where there's you know probably 5,000 people walking across the bridge, and there's a few cars still using the old bridge. Everything, and that is pretty much it. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, was there insurance on the first bridge? Oh, yes, there was insurance. That's a story in itself. <laughs> yeah, the guy uh, pocketed the premium, and uh, he spent about a year and a half in jail, and uh, then he went out, and uh, he was, um, he did find other employment, and I forget what it was. It wasn't in the insurance business, obviously, but, but the guy was, you know, yeah, he did pocket the premiums. And uh, he spent some time. Big as, as it turned out, the state was not out of uh, out money. The insurance company paid off. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The insurance company paid. He, they just uh, made that guy pay with probably a year and a half to a salary. But uh, that was that was very interesting. Uh, what's the source for a lot of your pictures? You you did take some towards the end of the presentation. Yeah. Yourself, but the other ones, the earlier ones. Right? Yeah. Most of all of these came from the uh, Northwest Room of Tacoma Library or the Washington State Department of Transportation or the Library of Congress. And, uh, so that was the three main sources. And also, uh, I got permission on a couple of them, uh, probably about four or five from Flickr uh, contributions. And um, uh, Tom Gachi. Which was is it Ted Gochi? Forgot. Gochi. Gochi. Yeah. Yeah. His yeah. Joe Gochi. Yeah. Joe Gochi. Yeah. Joe Gochi. He was uh, in uh, worked on the first bridge and the second. He worked on both of them, and he was a photographer. He took reams of pictures, and uh, I got a hold of his uh, <coughs> grandson and got the pictures, and he did turn the lights on so watch your eyes. Okay. So he was very generous to that. He was wow. just, wow, okay, another book. Yeah. This uh, does not compare to Joe Gotchi's book. Uh, Joe Gotchi's got a lot of detail. He was written by a guy that actually helped build it. That was from that perspective. Turned out to be a nice coffee table book. It, was, was, yeah. that, was that suspension? Yeah. But his was um, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, I think he called it. Suspension was another one that came out. Just uh, that was about 20 years ago, and then this uh, last one after the after 2007 was uh, a magnificent book on building the third bridge. Yeah, yeah, those are just really wonderful books. Mine is not a detailed book. Mine is just kind of an uh, overview and shows 
uh, casually some of the things that are kind of interesting mm -hmm. to the casual observer. But if somebody, and I think you've probably got both of those books, a Suspension and um, I've forgotten the other one. Here, two. Yeah, I don't recall the yeah what the title was. Yeah. So in doing your research, did um, did you find it? Inf was that always the route they were going to take, or did they explore other routes for that bridge? No, this was the earliest uh, route that was ever kind of mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, they talk about it back in 1886 or something like that. A couple guys were driving by on a boat, and they said something to the captain. He says, yeah, there's going to be a bridge across here or something. <laughs> yeah, that was where it ended up being. Yeah, there weren't any other really major <clears throat> routes that we considered. So I went back east a few years ago and I met a man from Maine and he said, when I told him where I was from, he said there's a bridge to the island that he lived on that was built by the, or designed by the same guy. <laughs> and it's still existing. It still exists because they don't have the wind shears or anything. Uh, but he, 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 you know, I found that really interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Design the first and the second bridge? The, the first, the first oh, bridge. He said it's the same design, but it may be shorter. I, I don't know how big it was. Anyway, he was really interested when he heard it. I was from Tacoma. So. <laughs> well, it's probably shorter because yeah. uh, yeah. the bridge is close to a mile. And probably yeah. no, no winds where he is either. But I can't remember where he was from, but it was somewhere in Maine. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Uh, original toll booth was on the Tacoma side, and then nowadays we're on the Gig Harbor side. What was kind of the evolution of the toll booths? I don't really know. It might have been the room, but I just um, don't know. I think they've decided to toll the new bridge and not the old one. Okay. So okay. that's why the, the toll things are on the Gate Harbor side. Makes sense. Well, that would make sense, yeah, because you've got four lanes instead of the other narrower one, the plus a real estate's more expensive. I think you had to pay both yeah. ways in those days, and going and coming. I remember doing that. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Unless somebody anybody else got a question, not that I could answer it. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks again. Thanks a lot. So, thank you all for uh, coming. Uh, this is kind of a maiden voyage and getting our program started again.